Wow, wonderful to see you all because tonight's session is very interesting. It's all about the mind. <laughs> if that what we're all talking. <laughs> and so last week, for those of you who weren't here, we were looking at mindfulness and introspection. So mindfulness being, you know, this ability that we have to sort of stay on an object, introspection being like this kind of little spy or this curious person we have inside us that knows when we've gone astray. So um, this is our just ability to check out ourselves and know what's going on. Sorry, I'm just trying to adjust the camera. And we did a very sweet breath meditation. Oh, wait a second, that's not going to work. Um, okay, that'll do. Um, and so I just wondered, for those of you that were here last week, uh, did you manage to do any meditations during the week? I expect you're all really busy. You did? And Mary, did you want to share anything about anything? Not really? Okay, no worries. So we'll just move on. That's what we did. That was our second session. Um and then we we did a body scan meditation and then we worked a little bit with distraction and dullness. Um, you know, dullness being a loss of alertness, um, a, a loss of sharpness in our attention. And it can come over us as drowsiness and sleepiness, uh, spacing out, blanking out, fogginess, um, uh, lack of energy in the mind so the mind it doesn't feel clear and alert and distraction is like the movement of our attention away from the object of mindfulness towards sounds thoughts and sensations things outside of us um it just is like an excessive amount of energy in the mind and it prevents us from sort of settling down and stabilizing ourselves in our meditation um uh, is we have this sort of also compulsive involuntary involuntary thinking and it's like these many thoughts these shiny objects that capture our attention and keep it involved past present imagination and it's often accompanied with these various emotional reactions even things that aren't even true or aren't even going to happen so that's what we were doing last week just to catch you all up and then we did a mindfulness of breathing meditation and what we're going to do today is we're going to start out uh, with this mindfulness of breathing meditation but first of all I'm going to introduce you a little bit to session three what have we got here okay well done okay just settle in put your seat belts on and let's start. So what we're talking about today is functional and dysfunctional thoughts. So I knew a lot of us uh, think that mindfulness is, you know, this medit meditative practice that's going to get us to stop thinking. But we all know that we can't stop our thoughts from running. But what, what we can do is learn to discern the difference between uh, the thought processes, you know, the thinking that's functional and useful and thinking that's dysfunctional and maladaptive. And so basically thinking that serves us and thinking that doesn't serve us. And our functional thinking really helps us to navigate through different life situations and work how best to proceed how to use our wisdom when we have to deal with uh, certain difficult situations at work, how we have, you know, sometimes we need to figure out our next step, you know, um, and a dysfunction dysfunctional thinking, on the other hand, is sort of tends to be habitual, it's involuntary, and it's reactive quite often. So something happens, we get distressed, uh, and we react so we don't put some space in between our thoughts. We just blah. We might have an imaginary scenario, like a story going on about something going on in the future. And and that's just kind of when you look, it's just madness. I mean, it's just craziness. We drive ourselves crazy with our own minds. 
and these dysfunctional thoughts just keeping us stressed out and sometimes we get in such a state where we can't rest or sleep and um it just kind of creates sust- tension and agitation in the body and the mind so sometimes we're not always like this you know sometimes we have days where we're feeling kind of normal but there are other times where something starts to arise and it starts to chew at us so um we can be mindful when we're working with these compulsive and involuntary thoughts so our little spy our little detector introspection kind of detects the arising and the presence of compulsive involuntary thinking during our mindfulness practice and so once we've noticed that that's what's happening apart from the fact and sometimes it's kind of comical it's like you have to be joking i must be crazy we can start to acknowledge the fact that our attention has been drawn into this kind of thinking and so in the practice of mindfulness of breathing which is um, what we're going to do in a minute the natural outbreath offers us a really good opportunity to practice letting go of such thinking so we will release all these thoughts from our attention in the same way that we can release carbon dioxide from our lungs so you can think of it it's like a, a, a something that's not needed we can even reinforce this idea by reminding ourselves uh, with the word release in our own mind. When we notice an out breath, just, you can just think as you exhale, release, and then return your attention once again back to the sensations of the breath. So uh, this is one way to cultivate mindfulness in stabilizing uh, meditation and it, one way that it can benefit us even in the early stages of our practice of mindfulness so we nurture our mindful focus on a specific object of meditation such as the sensations in the body when we did the body scan or the mindfulness in t- of, of touch we did in the first session or in the breath sensations in mindfulness of breathing and practice so what we're going to do today we're taking it one step further is we're going to practice releasing unnecessarily unnecessary physical tensions and calm our mental agitation especially those due to compulsive involuntary thinking so this is actually a great way to help us reverse these negative effects of chronic stress reactivity and many of us um kind of suffer from our own reactions to things because we make assumptions about what's being said or what situation is in front of us and we sort of react rather than taking a step back and putting some space between us and the difficult situation and if we were able to put some space between us and a difficult situation difficult words we would probably respond in a much more functional way in a way that probably would have a much better outcome. And doing this kind of work enhances our our own focused attention or concentration. And then concentration is accompanied by pleasant and harmonious functioning, body and mind. So does anybody have anything they want to say about that? Hi, Shayla. Nothing? Shall we get started? Yeah? All right. So I'm going to start by, we will start by actually just getting ourselves settled into our meditation position. And as most of you are actually sitting um, with your feet down, I think that's what it looks like anyway. Feel the sensations of the soles of the feet on the floor and they could be in socks in slippers on carpet so you might feel the soles then this the medial arch or median arch and then the this is kind of outside arch on the sole of the foot it's the outer edge of the foot 
and then you've got this ball mound and pinky mound and there's a little arch on top of that and then there's a your toe pads then feel the top of the foot see if you can relax that and then have your knees about a hips width apart you're sitting right on top of your sits bones and align your shoulders with your hips and just imagine lengthening your spine imagine your spine is a string of pearls of light stretching from the base all the way up through the crown of the head and beyond just really imagine you're lengthening your spine Take a nice deep breath. Ah, you can even sigh if you wish. And imagine your ears are in line with your shoulders. You're just getting longer, you're expanding, you're growing. Now bring your awareness to the crown of the head and relax the scalp. So all the surface on the crown of the head, just release it. You might notice some tingling there. And then move away from the hairline down to the forehead and the bridge of the nose, the eyes. You can move to the back of the eye. Relax the nose, the cheeks. Move down to your mouth, just relax all the area around your mouth, you can relax your ears and your temples and the jaw, the back of the tongue, and then just move back to the scalp, the back of the head, the, at the occipital bone, base of the skull, then relax your neck, your shoulders, your shoulder blades, just let them drop down. Relax the throat and the chest and the belly and your arms, your hands. Maybe you can feel the sensation of the hands resting in your lap or resting in each other. And relax the legs. Relax the feet. And feel the weight of your sits bones in your chair on your seat and then take a nice deep breath noticing the sensations of the air as you're inhaling and exhaling really notice the sensations of the breath You can use this as a um, support for your mindfulness, a place to return your attention when you get distracted. So we're placing our emphasis this time in this session on working with our compulsive and voluntary thinking. And this is the kind of thinking that intrudes on our meditation, draws our attention away from the breath. with this little spy that we have introspection we can detect the presence of this kind of involuntary thoughts in the midst of our meditation and we can just very gently bring our mind return our attention back to the breath and then when we breathe out we take this opportunity to reinforce releasing those thoughts from our mind those thoughts that no longer serve us Allowing the words and images to flow away with the out breath. And what we've been doing in our Vajrasattva is to maybe put those thoughts in little packages on a cloud or a lotus and just allow them to float away. So let's go to mindfulness of breathing. So, as I said, the sensations of our natural breath are the object of our mindfulness. We will repeatedly return our attention to the breath. 
the sensations of the breath. The more we get to return our attention gracefully to the breath, the stronger the connection and the familiarity will be between mindfulness and breath. So if you have done any um, of the Vipassana courses anywhere, they sometimes will teach you to feel the sensation. You For four days, you do a practice called Anapana, which is developing concentration. And you feel the sensation usually at the base of the nose. And you can feel the coolness of the air as you're inhaling on the outside of the nostrils and the warmth of the air as you exhale. Each time we notice a natural outbreath, there'll be a very subtle feeling of physical release that accompanies it. You know, it's like when you sigh, it's like, oh, except it'll be more subtle than that. So we can consciously associate that with a chance to release any body, any tension in our body, any, any mental agitation, and to try and build up a a positive association with this mindfulness of breathing. So introspection may alert us to the presence of this involuntary reactive thinking or dullness of mind. So that might be there as well, and that can be equally distracting. So just remind yourself to breathe out and to allow anything that you don't want there that's not serving you to flow away and be released. So bring your attention back to your body if, you're, if you've gone. Just notice the areas of softness and ease and relaxation in the body. And can you welcome these feelings and allow yourself to enjoy them while they're there? And maybe you have areas of tightness or uncomfortable feelings. Can you simply just acknowledge them for the time being? Do you need to change them immediately? Or can you just let them be? I mean, I'm not suggesting if you're in pain that you do that. but Perhaps you have some discomfort. Normally we immediately want to shift our body. But just sit with it for a moment, look at it, and check in with the sensations at your face. Are you tensing up any of your facial muscles? We've just relaxed them all, but maybe they retensed themselves. How is your forehead? How is your jaw? How are your eyes? Can you gently relax all the muscles of the face and let a feeling of softness, comfort and ease come onto our face? And you can allow this softening and relaxation to spread on its own down to the rest of the body, helping our body to settle into meditation in its own time. So let's just, for two or three minutes, just do that.
among the different bodily sensations. See if you can highlight those sensations associated with breathing. And some of you will notice these subtle, subtle sensations around our nostrils. We can feel the air flowing in and out of the body. Just focus on that for a moment. You may also notice the movement of the chest expanding and contracting with each breath. So, you know, we're very much front-facing, forward-facing people. We walk forward. We move forward. We talk about bringing things forward, keeping things moving forward. So don't forget that when you breathe, it's actually a 360 degree breath. Your chest is expanding, your ribs, your rib cage is expanding, the front, the side, and the back. So try and feel the whole of the rib cage, not just the front. So you can rest your attention on some of these breath sensations. You can move from the sensation of the air moving in out of the nostrils, the sensation of the rising and the falling of the chest, the expansion of the ribs, and the rising and falling of the belly that as the abdomen moves as we breathe. Perhaps some of you can notice the diaphragm moving. So just allow yourselves for a couple of minutes to fully experience your in-breath and out-breath, your inhale and your exhale.
So I would invite you to very gently say the guiding word release in your mind each time you notice an outbreath. So this is to remind your body that it doesn't need to hold on to unnecessary tightness and contraction. So let's just start with the body and then we can move to the mind. Now give yourself permission to remind your mind that it can let go of thoughts, memories, and fantasy, and stories, all these things that preoccupy us, that we can also release states of dullness and drowsiness, and just allow them to float away with the out-breath. So this is a little bit different than forcing things or bracing against things or criticizing ourselves. Just notice what's there and then give yourself permission to release the thoughts. So you can say the word release. So let's just try that for two or three minutes or more.
So maybe you notice that your attention has been attracted somewhere by some kind of shiny object. Or maybe you're feeling drowsy. Just simply invite your mind to come back to the sensation of the breath and to release on the out breath. You can try both those things again, just um, reminding yourself to release any unnecessary tightness to remind yourself you can release, let go of thoughts and memory and fantasy. And then when you notice your attention is distracted or you're feeling drowsy, you can simply invite yourself, come back to the breath.
Okay, everyone, you can just relax for a moment. Did we lose someone? Oh, we lost Shayla. So how was that for everyone? Does anyone have anything they would like to share or ask? You're all very meditative. <laughs> I'd like to make a comment. Yes, Phyllis. Um, my anxiety became overwhelming. It, certain about getting my business things done. It just became overwhelming. I had to turn off and get up and walk around. I really um, couldn't do it. And I, you know. This meditation? Did it happen yeah. just then? Yeah, when I went wow, on. Wow, that, that's so interesting. Come back. Wait, right. sorry, there you are. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, Phyllis, were you able to... So, obviously, there's a lot going on for you right now. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that wouldn't have come up. Right. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm really okay. uh, doing a lot of self-examination that's not pretty. <laughs> How's that? Well, all I can say is congratulations. And um, I think we're all there at some in some at some level or other. Otherwise everybody wouldn't be here. So right. you're definitely not alone there. And it's kind of wonderful that this particular practice leads us all there. So are you able to I think what you did, though, is excellent. You know, the, if there's, sometimes the lamas will say, you know, our guest here in San Francisco would say, you know, do this, do this, do this when you're feeling drowsy. But if none of that's working, get up and wash your face. <laughs> Splash cold water on your face. Right. You know, so, you know, there's only so much that you can do at any one time. And if the feelings are so strong and it's so overwhelming, you just have to do what you did, right? But mm -hmm. then you came back. Yeah. Then I went, okay, I'm better. <laughs> I can sit down. And yeah. so I think what I will actually, what I'd like to do is that, um, did you, were you in the first session where we did the. I was. Mindfulness through bodily touch. Did you find that relaxing? Oh, that was wonderful. So I think I might do that next actually, rather than getting onto what we were going to get onto, um, just to help bring all of that, that down a little bit. Um, it will be might be helpful for other people as well um, because I know that there's a few people in the room here have got things going on that are not easy to deal with. So um, sometimes when we do these sessions and you're asked to focus on some of the dysfunctional things that might be going on in the mind, it starts to get loud. So, um, and actually it's not a bad thing. It just, it's just for you to know that it's there. Mm -hmm. And um uh, then once you realize that something's there, it's almost like, oh, I've actually, I do have a broken arm. Perhaps I should put a plaster and a splint on it. Do you know? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why my arm's hurting. Uh, yeah. But, and there's, yeah, I mean, and there's also other things that we can do to help relax ourselves, you know, get a sauna, have a bath, you know, watch our favorite movie, go and have a hug, hang out with your best friend. There there are things that we can do, rescue remedy. I mean, there's lots of different herbal things that you can take as well. But, um, yeah, okay. So uh, I think what I'll do now before we move on to um, discerning wisdom is I think I'm just going to take a step back and go back to our... Um, mindfulness through bodily touch which is quite a sweet meditation and does anybody else have anything else they want to share did anything also come up for other people quite strongly in that session um i yeah i've got one thing yes um i talked previously about my that fear can come up for me when i yes. meditate yeah yeah okay so one of the things that came up today was putting my attention i could i could put my attention on the fact that all things change and mm -hmm. have some confidence that this kind of ongoing fear thing that comes up frequently 
it's just a phase and it may be long, it may be short, but knowing that it will eventually fade. And that was that that sort of put it in proportion for me, which was good. That's, that's great, too, because, you know, that beautiful saying, this too will change. Mm. And then when we also think about um, reflecting back on our life and it's like, oh, I got through that one okay. And I remember how yeah. bad I felt at that particular time, <laughs> you know, and it's like, wow, oh, and then it ended up working out okay. Yeah. And there are, on top of that, there are other things that you can do, I mean, just on a practical level as well. I mean, um Right now, I'm in helping a friend of mine organize a meditation and yoga retreat at uh, Green Gulch, which is a Zen meditation center very close to here. And I had got a sense that something, the, you know, the numbers weren't as as kind of fast and furious as they were the last time. And I was like, oh, something's going on here. So I just wrote to Kopan and I said, can you, can you ask Geshe-la for a puja? So it comes back that there seems to be there's some obstacles, and so they're going to do some pujas to remove pujas and incense puja and this and that three to remove the obstacles. So there's other things that we can do as well, um, you know, on, on top of us just kind of struggling along by ourselves. So I don't know if these things work. My experience is they they do. I don't know um, exactly how it all happen, how it all works, or how it all comes about, but. Sometimes even just by doing things like that, you feel like you've got a little bit of extra support. You know, even just sometimes going and talking to a friend is helpful because they can often give you a different perspective. Yeah, anyway, yeah I thanks. agree. And yeah. the, uh, the other thing is like the Vajrasattva practice is mm -hmm. for this. It's kind of helpful, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I yeah. wanted to say the expression that works best for me because it's a little poetical, I don't know where it comes from, is this too will pass. I think it might have some <laughs> biblical quote, but that works better than this too will change. This too will change. This too will pass. Actually, I think it's the one I was thinking of. This too will pass. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Jay. Thank, Thank you. you. Susan, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just very briefly. I just want to say thank you to Phyllis for bringing that up because yeah. uh, it connected with me because my mind gets very unruly. It just, you know, goes on a tangent. And tonight, the breathing really helped with that. Coming back to the breathing and, and applying it in different places in my body, I really focused in on that. It really helped a lot. So thank you for that. Thank you to Phyllis, too. Yeah, thanks, Phyllis. See how helpful that has been for everyone? We're unfortunate. We're flying off the seat of your discomfort, but what you're seeing from is having the similar experience to one degree or another. And um, yeah. So on on Sunday, I'm I'm chant I'm chanting the, on the Umze for Guru Puja practice, and I was for the Shanti Davis Center for you know I was quite happy to do it. And then I was told that um, Sirkon Rinpoche is going to be coming. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I want to make sure the tunes are perfect. So then I start, that's where my mind is going. My little Virgo mind wants to be perfect. So then I get onto the Lamy Ishi Wisdom Archive to look for every single piece of advice that Rinpoche ever gave about how to chant. And he gives three different speeds for chanting and then different tunes. And I'm just like, oh. Uh, so anyway, you're not alone, my friend. <laughs> so my mind's been quite busy this afternoon, but I've been, uh, the one way I find to make it less busy is just to focus on, okay, I can, this bit I can do, this bit's going to be easy for me to remember this bit everybody can re do in English. Um, I just have to be practical. And I don't quite understand what Rinpoche is saying here, so I'm just going to not do that for the time being until I can get some clarity. You know, after a while, sometimes these are just obstacles in our minds. For me, I recognize it anyway when it comes to Dharma or chanting and whatever. Like a year ago, I would be like, I had no idea how to do this tune, but now it seems to be a little bit clearer. So... There, sometimes we create these kind of obstacles in our mind and then sometimes they clear and all of a sudden it's like, oh, what was I so worried about? So, okay, let's do this mindfulness of 
bodily touch. And now I notice it's 10 to 7. So, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to do, We'll. I'll do a shorter one. Um, so let's just settle back into our um, meditation posture again. And hang on one second. Okay, so um, just settle again. Align your spine and then very gently rest one hand on the on the crown and just allow the sense of touch to draw your attention there and just notice any sensations notice the sensation of the weight of the hand on the head and the sensation of the hair in your hand and the warmth the energy passing between the two and as you breathe, you can maybe inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of four. And you'll notice that as you're doing this, because our attention is drawn to our touch, it's a little bit more difficult to get carried away with our thoughts. Now move to the face, and you can just place your hands very gently over your face. If you have if you have glasses, you can maybe take them off. I can't remember if anyone has. And just feel the warmth of your hands. Just feel the softness of your cheeks. Notice if there's any tension there and release it. And can you allow... Uh, different feeling of softness and ease and comfort come into your face. Maybe your cheeks are a little bit cold. Now move your hands down to your neck. So you can maybe have one hand on the front of the neck and another hand on the back of the neck. And can you feel, can you sense the touch of your hands and maybe other sensations there? You can feel the warmth of your hands. Maybe you can feel energy passing from the neck to the throat, to your hands. Breathe in for a count of four. Exhale for a count of four. Because of time, I'm going to do both shoulders and both arms at the same time. So you can just, if this is available to you, you can maybe rest each hand on the opposite shoulder. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has shoulder issues or elbow issues or wrist issues, but just do the best you can. How is your shoulder feeling today? Just notice, feel the sensations and the warmth. And then move your hands, each hand rest on the underneath the opposite elbow. Just very lightly hold on to it. And feel the sensations there. Move down to your wrists. Just do the best you can. Maybe you can rest the palm of each hand on the opposite wrist. You can hold your wrists, whatever's available to you. Just notice the sensations there.
and then just maybe hold your own hand. Rest the, you can rest the palms and put them together in prayer. You can rest them in the meditation mudra. You can imagine you're holding a friend's hand. You'll, you'll be your own friend tonight. Just notice the sensations there. Notice the, the sensation of the palm in the back of one hand. Notice the sensation of the back of the other hand in the palm and you can just switch. Now come back to your chest and place both hands over your heart center. Perhaps put the left hand underneath the right. And what can you sense here? What can you feel? Can you feel the beating of the heart or the rhythm of the breath along with other sensations? Keep the inhale and exhale to full count. Bring both hands down to your belly and rest them there. Maybe you can feel the rising and the falling of the belly as you're breathing. Maybe you can feel some rumbling in there. Just move your hands down. Just rest them very gently on your quads, on the top of your thighs. Feel the sensation and the weight of your pelvis, your sits bones in your chair. And just slide your hands forward and rest them on your knees. Give your knees a little bit of care and love. And just bring your mind to the sensations at the knees. Now send your attention down to your feet. You can keep your hands on your knees or you can sit back and rest your hands on the top of your thighs. Sense the sensations at the soles of the feet, the top of the feet, your toes. Do you like to wriggle your toes around? So having become aware of all these sensations and bringing them to the forefront of our mind, we can rest both legs on the ground. Can you release their weight into gravity? Just feel the weight of your legs into your ankles and your feet. So we'll just rest here for a minute.
Let me just relax. Let me just check in. How's everyone doing? Good. Was that helpful for us, Susan? Jay? That was so very we... helpful to me. Thank you. Okay, it, good. It really was. I'm, I missed the first session, so I didn't oh. know about it. But oh, I'm glad that I, it's like a new tool, really. It totally is. It's a wonderful meditation. And I think we only did it for just over 10 minutes. So it doesn't, you could actually do it even in five. It doesn't take very long and it's super effective. And I just find it's really hard to think when you've got your hand resting on the ground. <laughs> and that's the sensation that you're focusing on, you know. So interesting. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about... Uh, this discerning wisdom. So what, what is that? So being mindful, as you know, I mean, if you've, any of you have studied anything, and I'm sure all of you have, whether you've studied medicine or massage therapy or how to be an administrator, you've needed to be able to concentrate. And uh, the wisdom that you have developed through your study and your work is uh, a mental quality that discerns good qualities and flaws of an object under examination. You know, when we go shopping, we're always looking for a deal, but we're always looking for good quality things, you know, things that aren't going to fall apart in two minutes. So we use our discerning wisdom to check out, to see whether something is going to be useful to us. Then if we realize it isn't, we just send it back to Amazon. I don't know what happens to all those things that we send back to Amazon. It's just horrifying. There must be a kind of a black hole somewhere for all the returned Amazon things anyway. So mindfulness helps us to hold our attention on an object and to sort of start to investigate and analyze. And um, then we come to a conclusion about that object. And then my, and our mindfulness familiarizes with that conclusion to deepen our understanding and knowledge of the object. So I, I guess all of you have experienced this at any time, at some time when you've been learning something. So one, one, one reason we have quite a hard time putting aside our compulsive and voluntary thoughts that disturb our mind and our body is because we get caught up in the content of those thoughts and we tend to take them to be the reality of the moment. So sometimes we start to believe the thinking that we have about the past we bring it into our mind, a, a memory, and then it's almost like the emotions are as if it's happening right now. And then we get lost in our thoughts about a future scenario and react to it, like with emotions, as if it's actually real and it's it's something we're making up. So we don't realize that our attention is really involved in such thinking and it's really no longer in touch with what's going on in the present moment so basically we're getting caught up in a fantasy and we're getting emotionally distressed about that fantasy so when we have this ability to discern this wisdom we can learn to differentiate between the different types of objects our mind is engaging in such as we you know we we understand what a tactile sensation is, including the breath. We know what a sound is. Um, we can think in words and images. And particularly, a lot of us are not very aware of the power of our thinking. You know, this is why they say, you know, like anger and stress and all this kind of negative thinking leads to disease, dis-ease. And Mummy Ish used to always say, you do have the power. You do have the power. 
So we have these habits. We have compulsive, involuntary thinking. And we believe in it without questioning. And then we follow through. This is why you hear about all these, you know, all these kind of crimes that happen. Someone has made up a story and then they've decided to go out and act on it. That's just craziness. So by training ourselves in meditation on mindfulness of thoughts, we begin the process of recognizing when we're involved in thinking and learn to identify thinking as thinking. So, you know, when it gets too overwhelming, you can just do like Phyllis did and get up and walk around and come back and sit down. So discerning thoughts, just as thoughts, can help us to put the contents of those thoughts in perspective. we got to get ourselves into perspective. It's almost like you have to sit down and talk to yourself as if you're your best friend. So um, we have to kind of think about what is true and what is not true, what is actually a fact about what is going to happen. Tomorrow I am going to get in the car and I'm going to drive to Novato. If I'm alive tomorrow morning, that's something that's actually going to happen. But I need to think about it until tomorrow. Or perhaps some of us struggle with self-critical, judgmental thoughts. And we can just learn to regard all of these self-judgments in our thinking. They're just thoughts. They're not reality. And sometimes we're surprised. You know, we have so much negativity going on in our mind. We're surprised at the feedback that we get from people that's positive. It's almost like, are you talking about me? So if we can develop a skill of mindfulness and discerning wisdom with regards to the way we think, uh, we can go a long way to relieve ourselves from the stress and distress brought on by our compulsive involuntary thoughts. So anything to say about that, people? Do you recognize any of that? Did any of it make sense or not? Okay. Is it helpful, Phyllis? I didn't hear what you said. I mean, you know, I blocked it, whatever you said. Oh, what I was just saying just then? Yeah, about how to. I didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you heard it at some level. Right. It, it means that you are, you've got a lot going on. And so sometimes we check out and that's okay. You just do the best you can. But it, it's it's there. You heard it somewhere. Well, it's like listening selectively. Uh-huh. You know. So we can start by trying not to be quite so hard on ourselves. That's a good place to start. I think sometimes we have these habits, you know. We just have this habit energy of that's where we go first. Oh, it's oh, I shouldn't have done that. So bad. We need to stop that. Well, I mean, for for me, it's about a sudden realization about myself that I didn't know before, and I looked at it back through my whole life, and I'm I'm, I'm shocked. And it's not so bad; it just is shocking to me that I that's who I am, and I didn't know it. Uh are you able to tell us what you're referring to? Oh, this is. Oh, you're, you're cutting out. It's hard to say. It's just that um, it's hard for me to make friends, even though I like everybody. They like me, but I don't really have any close friends and never have. It's, oh, I was, you know, so I'm blown away by this picture and. Is there anything I can do now that I'm in my 80th year to change that? I don't know. <laughs> I think just showing up uh, is the first step, and it's really all you need to do. 
to take care of your own heart and take care of yourself. Yeah. And sometimes there's, you know, there's sometimes in these kinds of situations, there's trust issues uh, on just on a basic psychological level. Sometimes maybe you, you were a yogi in your past life and you're not used to being around people. Maybe you spent your last life in a cave somewhere up in the mountains. <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't know. Yes. But... I would, right now, I'd like to spend my rest of my life in a cave if I thought there I could. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But you're here, Phyllis. So that's kind of like a kind of you showed up. That's the That's all you need to do for now. Mary, did you want to share something? Well, I just find that hearing your voice, I go into a meditation. I mean, and sometimes, <laughs> I, seriously, like when I hear your voice or when I listen to a YouTube, it immediately calms me down if I'm distracted. But like what Phyllis was saying, I heard everything you said tonight, but I was drifting a little bit, but hearing your voice it was, it's, it's like a meditation in itself for me. I don't know how, if anyone else feels that, but there's something about your voice that I feel like everything's going to be okay. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Mary. I, I hope that, I hope that so. Did we lose another person? Well, there was eight. Marion said she had to leave early. Oh yeah. She has a, her husband's really not very well. I'm really sorry. Yeah, he, yeah. Well, thank you for that, Mary. I'm, um, you know, I, I also think I didn't want to sort of teach this course. I mean, in terms of teach, I wanted it to be, uh, it's not that I didn't want to teach it, but I didn't want to teach it. I wanted it to be an experience for people. So I moderated the way I'm talking um away from teachy to almost making the whole thing a meditation so if sometimes there are things that we hear that are hard for us to take in so we just uh put them to you know we block them out but that's your discerning wisdom so you can do the same thing to those thoughts that are loud in your mind uh that are causing you stress you can, you can, uh, anyway, I think this last meditation, we've got like 15 minutes left. Let's try and, you looked a little bit confused, Mary, but um, sorry, I'm probably not being very clear. So let's just uh, do this last meditation. Where am I? This is a meditation on mindfulness and discerning wisdom. Where am I? of thoughts Hang on one second okay oh, what's going on here wait a second Okay, all right. Let's just settle into our meditation posture, be comfortable. So here you can also, again, make use of the sensation of the breath as a support for your mindfulness. Uh, I think as some of you were saying, you can make it a place to rest your attention. Or when you feel dull and drowsy, or when you've noticed you've checked out. So you can regard the breath as a friend, your companion. It helps us to stay mindful and not get lost amongst all those thoughts arising. And without feeling that we've, we've really got to constantly focus all at all times. And the breath is always there. I mean, this is why we're alive, because we're breathing. So start 
with a mental note in your mind, such as thinking. And so this is the thought. When you become aware that thoughts have arisen in the mind. So noting or labeling in this way has this added function of strengthening that discernment so as to make it less likely for us to lose our mindful awareness and then fall back into believing and following all those thoughts. So we can observe the huge variety of thoughts, the different manners in which they seem to sneak up on us and catch us unaware and how easy it is for us to get lost in them. We want to return our attention to the breath to steady it as a point of reference to help us discern our thoughts without getting caught up in them. This, our breath is kind of like a friend, a companion to accompany you on your mindfulness journey. So let's just um, start here. Just close your, close your eyes, just relax, start to breathe, and when you notice what's going on in the mind, you just can make a note, I'm thinking. It also helps us to put some space in between our thoughts. And one of the things that starts to happen when you start to meditate on mindfulness is that you become aware of the vast variety and amount of stuff that's in our mind. Kind of we're full of it. Images, pictures, sounds, advertisements, pressure family events, we're all coming up to Thanksgiving. One friend of mine, um, she's one of my friends from yoga, for many, many years, she and her partner, now husband, have been the ones who host a Thanksgiving dinner for all their friends, family. And for several years, this friend of mine doesn't want to do it anymore, but she felt out of a sense of obligation, a sense of trying to please people that she would just keep doing it. Finally, with great trepidation, she told everyone this year, I, you know, we're not having Thanksgiving this year. We're, we're you know, we're going north to Montesino. We're going to have time by ourselves. And she couldn't believe what a relief that was. But the amount of struggle it took for her to get there mentally. Many, many, many stories. And what a relief for her when she just let it all go and decided to do what was going to serve her and her relationship at Thanksgiving. So when you become a little bit more um, practiced in this pro process of uh, recognizing thinking. You can refine your power of discernment by differentiating the different types of thinking that your attention is involved in. And we've started doing this a little bit in our Vajrasattva meditation, the morning meditations. So you can replace the simple label of thinking with others that might better reflect the contents. So thoughts about the past could be noticed as remembering. Those on planning as planning, those involved in fantasies as daydreaming or stories. And this way we can become a little bit more mindful and a little bit wiser uh, with regard to the types of habitual thinking that we are engaging in.
We'll move back to the sensation of the breath. And just experience the inhale and the exhale. Again, each time we notice ourselves breathing in and then breathing out, you can use that as anything unhelpful, anything unwanted, anything that's no longer serving you. Just the way we can breathe out to let go of stale air in our lungs. Your breath is a, a resting place for your mindful attention, a place that you can always come back to at any time to steady yourself. when your introspection alerts you to the presence of thoughts turn your mindful attention to those thoughts and recognize that you're engaged in thinking and you might want to mentally make a note thinking memory, story, just to be clear about what we've discerned, you can just package everything. And then without getting kind of wrapped up in the contents of the thoughts, the story, the future tripping, can kind of gently return our attention to the breath. And you can release those thoughts on the out breath. You can just even say to yourself, just very gently, as you breathe out, as you exhale, just release. You can also imagine your body relaxing at the same time. And be curious. It's like, oh, hello. It's you again. Now, you're a very old habit. Perhaps you'd like to be released. Everybody just relax. We have about five minutes. So if anyone has anything they'd like to share. How was that? Were you able to do it? Was that helpful? I mean, we've been doing it. We've been doing it for a while now. A couple of months, I think, since I last did this. I decided to take it on. Um, categorizing our thoughts. So some of you might recognize it. 
So, Phyllis, how was that for you? Not that I'm picking on you or anything. <laughs> but you know I'll talk. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I found it, again, hard. I've always found this hard, like categorizing my thing, you know, my thoughts. I find that really hard. Oh, that's interesting. Do you know why that is? I don't. I had never even considered doing it. I've done, at times, for a year or so, I did a two-hour meditation every morning. Wow. I never, But never categorizing thoughts, and I didn't have a problem with the thoughts then. So, and that wasn't that long ago, but um, now boy, my mind is jumping around and I uh, can't quite stay with you on this categorize. I, at first, when I heard about it, I thought, what is this? <laughs> and not from you, but from the llamas. And, but I just, I forget, I just don't go there. So just start by when you notice your thinking, go, oh, I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, just, just start, sim start think, simply. Just start with thinking. Just start yeah. with one, categorizing one thing. Yeah, just th thinking is a thing. And I feel like a total, total beginner again, and I've been doing Buddhism since the late 90s, but I don't remember a lot. <laughs> and um, and I the meditation issue is so different than it has mm. been. Mm. I'm wondering also too. I notice as I'm getting older, my 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 mind is changing, definitely. For sure, for sure. And a lot of it's got to do with hormones as well, and vitamins, yeah. and and physical changes, physiological changes, life changes. Right. So you know we go through different phases of our lives, and things shift. Yeah. And um, I think it's helpful if we just embrace and. The, what we've got now becomes our superpower, not what we had then you know, before. <laughs> so your superpower might be something completely different now than it was before, and for sure your meditation has matured. It's yeah. just different. It's just it's different. different. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, Susan, did you have something you wanted to share? We've got a couple of minutes left, and I have to go and have a piece of toast before Fajr <laughs> You know, what really helped me was just thinking. Normally I do start categorizing and then I start getting tripping on the categories. Oh, and oh my so, God. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so tonight, you keep when, it simple. <laughs> <laughs> tonight when you said just identify it and just thinking, I tried that. It really helped. Okay. That was a great idea. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. So, uh, Let's just dedicate all the positive energy, the positive merit that we've created today. Maybe we've learned a little bit about ourselves um, that might be helpful. Maybe we've learned to let go of something that's not so helpful. Anyway, let's just dedicate for our own future meditation as we're moving along the path. And lots of love. Thank you so much for coming. It's a beautiful little group. Thank you. And thanks for hosting, um, Lou. And let's meet in half an hour. Yeah? Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you.